So here's something that was posted, uh, well, so, actually I saw it come up on Twitter and I retweeted it and I sent you the link. It's uh, a post over on Reddit about the uh, My Team uh, pack odds. And of course, you've play, I've played a bit of My Team, you've played a significant amount of My Team. And it's basically from uh, someone who has worked in the gaming industry and worked on uh, MMORPGs and Facebook games and their mobile games and uh, games that have re- random drops pack odds, things like that of their own type. And basically commenting on the odds of the, of the packs in, in my team and basically talking about it saying he doesn't think it's likely that there's any kind of fudging for if you're a first-time spender, your odds are increased by X amount. Says that's not very common in the, uh, in the industry. He goes in a bit of detail about sort of the percentages of how it might work. Says a lot of these things are industry standard, the, or the approach to it. Uh, yeah, kind of an, an interesting read about it. Uh, uh, I suppose you know we can speculate on the odds in uh, in my team and, and ultimate team, of course. Um, yeah, but uh, what's uh, what's your thoughts? Uh, what are your thoughts as someone who has played a lot of my team and, and bought uh, a pack or two, sometimes with real money? I mean, he's probably right in that they don't change the odds. It's just it's probably definitely a matter of psychology and you know a lot of it being kind of uh, psychosomatic. If that's is that the right word? I don't think that's probably not the right word. Like, it's definitely in your head, like, as far as, like, the odds are concerned and thinking, you know, oh, I'm not, you know, they're changing it because I'm not a big YouTuber or whatever, you know. Um, I mean, I guess that there's, well, par- you could say it's paranoid. Um, almost a placebo <laughs> almost a placebo effect, I think, you know. It's like you, you get a good draw and you think, oh, well, this is my first pack or I haven't bought a pack for a while, so they must be trying to draw me back. So I guess... Yeah. I guess no, placebo is probably not the perfect word, but something. I, I know what you're getting at. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I just found it interesting. Like at the very beginning of my team, there were a lot of YouTubers that were um, drawing a lot of really great cards, and I remember. Um, I think it was Troy Dan Gaming had one that had like this video where it said my my team packs are lit or whatever. Yeah. And. Um, I was like, wow, that's that's great PR for NBA 2K17. Um, but, you know, I, I didn't draw anything from that, but I thought maybe, like, you know, how you get those free packs at the start, maybe those were a little bit juiced up. But, um, yeah, it, it's hard to tell because, like, I have seen YouTubers um, open up boxes and get a bunch of rubbish cards and then get, like, a diamond. So, you know, it's, it's not... Um, I don't think they're unfairly fixing it or anything like that or even really changing the odds all that much. It's just um, it's just a matter of, you know, it's a matter of perception, really, I guess. Well, it, it does note in this post um, by uh, Vietas Cool, um, the individual customers do not have access to a large enough sample size to notice any of these uh, minute details. And the, the only, you know, you brought up the, the YouTubers and that's that's, because there has been that speculation of the packs being juiced and, and being then provided with, with codes and whatever. But, you know, I remember when, when they had the preview video for my team last year and they had all those people at the community event opening up the packs and getting all these great cards. I remember saying at the time, oh, is, is this going to be indicative of what it's actually going to be like? Have they changed the odds? Have they, are they just editing it to show them, get, you know, they're showing them grabbing all the great cards, obviously. They're not showing them go, opening up the 10 packs of crap. You know, so, so there's kind of where was the manipulative editing, if any, in the in that video? Because obviously they want to show my team in the best light possible at the time, and I, I felt I felt it was a bit sketchy because it you know, it doesn't show the full pack opening and whatever, and you don't know whether the whether it is. But I mean, yeah, I've having opened that box a while back, I know I got a fair amount of pretty good cards out of that. So the the odds aren't aren't terrible. I mean, if you're just grabbing one pack every so often, I, I suppose it is going to look a lot worse than if you do open a bunch at, at a time. So, but it, it was a, a, a an illuminating uh, insight, I guess, into the whole way that, that odds work. Um, we we he he doesn't know the exact odds of of the packs not working for two K. We don't have that information either. Uh, do you think they really need to? Is that something they need to change, or do you think it's pretty fair at the moment because i remember the first year when i tried it in 2k14 i thought the odds were a little bit unfair but they have gotten better i think 
I mean, since I haven't spent any money this year on packs, I would say, you know, my perception is probably a little skewed because I, I thought it was completely unfair in 2K16. But at the same time, you know, um, I don't know. It, I think... I think the mode's enjoyable enough for it not to be so much of a problem anymore, at least for me anyway. Like, they've made a lot of improvements, so I can kind of forgive not getting, um, you know, a great pack every now and then because I only really buy one pack every now and then, so I'm not always expecting the greatest odds on that. Um, yeah, I, I, just, I don't know what my answer is, actually. Like, it's it's a really kind of, it's a complex thing for me like having that experience and whatnot i think if anything i'd like to see better odds of getting historical players in historical packs that yeah. that, that seems to be the and, and there are times and as the post notes that there's higher drop rates for specific cards during some pack releases uh themed or otherwise but i don't know i think if you get a historic pack you should get some kind of historic player uh, and I think that was the way in 2K14 because I remember getting the Bulls packs and getting a lot of like Craig Hodges and Bill Wennington and then finally, uh, amazingly, getting the 93 Jordan. Uh, nah. and, and But I, always, I do think that the historic packs for the team should always be historic players. It's I think it's a, a pretty disappointing to get that historic pack, you know, for the say for the Spurs and you may be expecting a David Robinson or a Duncan or a Rodman or something like that and, and getting a, I don't know... Jabari Parker. You get Jabari Parker, yes, I suppose, yeah. <laughs> or I was trying to think of someone on the Spurs that might be a bit disappointing. Um, I mean, Spurs have got a, lot, got a lot of good players, so... Andrew Gaze, maybe? No, he wouldn't be in the game. I mean, um, I mean but even that would be a historical player. That, and, that would be fun, yeah. That would be, that would be I, cool, I, yeah. Um, yeah, I can't think. So, some, you know, one of the deep bench players on the current Spurs instead of, uh, you know, even... Maybe, maybe even, wrong team, because they have got a deep team. Maybe think of, like... Maybe a deep bench player on the sixes or something. <laughs> like if you had a sixes pack and you got like um, uh, Hollis Thompson or something like that. <laughs> In, instead of, yeah, like even I'd take a... No, I'd take yeah, George Lynch. Yeah, I'd take a George Lynch probably over anyone. On the, <laughs> an Aaron McKee, an Eric Snow, a prime Eric Snow, something like that. Yeah. So it either way, I do think there needs to be that definite historic player in the stor- historic packs. I mean, I, I guess the... The, the stars are going to have the, the lower drop odds, which is realistic. I mean, that's the way trading cards work, so fair enough. Yeah. You know, if you get more Vinny Del Negros than David Robinsons, that's fair. But just even see if I can get a... I mean, if I was to get a... You know, I was going to say Joel Anthony, but he's a legend around these parts. Um, he I, is. You know, Don't you know, be too controversial. Yeah. Don't get fired, as I would say. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if I get the Spurs historic pack, hoping for an Avery Johnson at least, you know, even a Vinny Del Negro, and I get a uh, a Bryn Forbes, you know. Oh, um, interesting one. I'm yeah. going to be uh, a little bit disappointed, <laughs> probably. So. Yeah, maybe just a little bit. So that's something they change. Uh, I'll post that link in the forum as well because it is uh, interesting for anyone who's wondering about those odds and uh, might be a uh, fun discussion to have for people who are into mod. Yeah, and it's great to get an insight from somebody who actually has worked in an industry similar to that. So it's not just all speculation and you know hysteria and conspiracy theory. So I commend that person for writing that. I think it was a very good thing to do. Oh, absolutely, and you know it's come up in the forum recently and of course uh, os's a visit to 2k and talking to the um, talking to the development team you know we know, we know stuff about basketball we know stuff about basketball video games but unless you a lot of us i don't think know as much as we think we do about uh, development uh, no games. <laughs> so you know it, as you said easy to put out a conspiracy there and again that is not to say that there is nothing you know wrong or that there aren't practices that can be that can't be improved but Know, it is very easy when you don't have all the facts to uh, to assume that there's a, a conspiracy or, or some other kind of underhanded uh, thing at, at play. So any kind of insight you can get from someone who's worked in the industry at always fascinating. Yeah, definitely. 